Welcome to the Journey to Happy podcast, where you get concrete tools for mindset work, my best tips for lowering your anxiety. You also hear funny and encouraging stories from me and others who have stories to share. Around here, you will discover the easy way to stop overthinking, to get rid of self-doubt, and finally embrace a calmer, more confident you. I am Olga, your host, a former therapist, a life coach, wife, blissfully an IVF mother, and a coffee lover. I'm excited that you tune in today and I'm honored to be on the journey with you. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're listening to this in the podcast, welcome to Journey to Happy Podcast. And if you are a Reset member, I am so excited you're getting first dips into this conversation that I'm having with my very special guest of the day, somebody who I met a year ago, more or less, eh? Yeah. In a complete different setting, we were both peers taking a program together and we connected and we really enjoyed each other's line of work. And one thing that always surprised me about you, Kim, or surprised, yeah, that surprised me, not about you, but about me, is that I was going to have such a big interest in a stylist, fashion stylist, like not once in my, I, like no offense, but before you, I didn't really realize that existed, that there were people whose job was to style somebody. And I have really loved your perception of styling and how you want to bring a sense of confidence to the women that you help style. And that to me, well, that's the main reason you're here as a guest today, because this month Insight Reset Your Mindset, for those who don't know, is the month of June. And at this moment, we are working on cultivating a happier, healthier relationship with our body image. And so Kim, you pop into my head right away. I was thinking like, I remember our conversations about dressing to build up your confidence is a thing. And so I definitely want to bring you on. And I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to my audience. I, I know how busy you are. And so I really, truly appreciate that you are here today. Oh, thank you so much. Honestly, it's such a pleasure. So uh, Kim, why don't we begin by explaining who you are, what you do, and like what brought you to this line of so I am Kim Fergoso. I'm a fashion stylist. And to your point, some people are not really familiar with what a stylist does. And my line of work has always been tied to making people look good and making clothes look good. So a little bit of background, but I have also very strong retail, retail visual merchandising background, which again, makes making clothes look good, making a store look good, making events look good to sell clothes and also making women look and feel good in what they're wearing. And so living in an area where outside of LA, very prevalent, high profile people are always going to events and things like that. So I would be working with a lot of pro high profile people and helping them get dressed. And on the retail side of it, I would be working with everyday individuals who also wanted those same things. And so it's kind of been a marriage of those two. I always love that you were never able to tell me who your clients were, how high profile they were. And I'm like, but give me a hint. What did they do? And you're like, actors and actresses in Hollywood, you would know them, which is why I can't tell you. And I'm always like, ah. Oh. So this is who we're talking to, guys. Uh, not just any stylist, but a fashion stylist who is really, truly working with people who we've seen looking good. We just don't know who they are because she can't tell us. Ah, I know, I know. Trust me, it's not just you. It's everyone, everyone. So, yeah. But, but Kim, you've recently opened your own practice aside from styling happy, rich people. <laughs> You're also <laughs> styling a regular human like myself. And I've witnessed you opening uh, your new website and stuff. So who is your ideal? Who is the person who you're actually helping today? Not only these high profile uh, clients, who unfortunately, they're not my audience. <laughs> I'm not coaching women who are that high profile. I am coaching on a regular basis women. And I think to your point earlier, you wanted to just kind of bring the clothing 
looking good and they're feeling good feeling to to everybody not just high profile people so uh what is this website what are these services that you're now offering well the website is my namesake kimfergoso.com and basically i have taken that knowledge and all that i've learned throughout these years and packaged it into programs for everyday women i often work with women who are business owners so entrepreneurs and or career ambitious women. So it's really anybody who feels like they want to present themselves on the outside the way that they feel on the inside. Oh, I love that. Present yourself on the outside and that has so much to do with body image. So let's just dive into it, okay? You and I had conversations about how some women come to you feeling not confident, having the conversation of like, why would I invest say in a stylist? or even in shopping, new clothing, when my body is not how it used to or where I want it to be. What is that conversation looking like for you as a stylist with them? Yeah, so I call it dressing with confidence. And this is really something that I think everyone has had a moment with. And that is really leaning into who you are right now, what you look like right now. Um, Fortunately, and this is across all boards from the highest profile person you can think of, models, actresses, everyone has felt this way at some point in their lives. And I feel like it's super, super important to acknowledge what you are now and to be okay with saying, I am worthy and deserving right now. I don't need to always set a goalpost for myself to do something that I want to do. And for me, particularly, that is through clothing. And so why do you have to wait to express yourself? You don't. You're awesome just how you are right now. So we should be able to see that. I love that you talk about it as expressing yourself. Tell me more. Like how, like what expression am I giving you right now with this outfit? Well, (laughs) um, it is expressing yourself. And it's because really, I think that people forget that what we wear speaks volumes, whether we use it intentionally or not right? We can be running around, you know, and leggings and a t-shirt and running shoes. And you're going to, what, assume that somebody is running to the gym or they're coming from the gym or whatnot. Not to say that that's always the case, but there are certain assumptions that we make about people, whether we like it or not, right? But I like to take it more from a place of instead of what is it on the outside, the other person looking at themselves, it's how are you seeing yourself and how do you want to see yourself going forward? I think that's the most important part. So walk me through that. I am your client and I'm coming to you. Where do we start? What what sort of like, and, and then this is a real example. As you know, I gave birth 19 months ago. And so I may have, uh, I may, I did experience a body change. Definitely a body change, right? Like my body is not what it was. It's better. <laughs> it's better because it's giving me a baby. Uh, but my body is not what it was. And so I may have to, I had to adjust, right? Like the image of the body I had in my head is not the body that I now have. And so that took some readjusting, rediscovering what looks good for my body type today. What are some of the suggestions that you would do to a client working through these steps? Because I want our listeners to be able to say, all right, this is how I can begin to one notice that expression like what do you walk people to is it a feeling like this is how I feel and so I should be dressing choosing my outfits this way notice the body I have now and I should express like I'm a bit confused like what is my my like you know how do I dress to this body type how do you walk people through that yeah so one of the ways I do that uh, particularly in dress with confidence which is a program that I have launching relaunching soon I have a workbook and I think it's really important to again not just look at the actual physical and the exterior but to start to ask yourself questions about how you feel how you want to feel what is the outcome so for a lot of people who are feeling this way it's usually because there's been some kind of transition in their life as you mentioned you know, having a child or, you know, whatnot, divorce or a different change of careers, lots of different transitions. But when something like that's happened, that usually means that you're having to look at your life in a different way now than you were looking at it before. And that's okay. So it's acknowledging those changes and saying, okay, if this is what is my life is now, what is it that I would like to look like? And I start to use words. It's one of my favorite exercises is to use a few words to describe what you want to convey. And by using those words, you can look at yourself, even right now, 
I could go look at myself in the mirror and say, okay, I wanted to look X, Y, and Z. Do I think that somebody looking at me and me looking at myself, am I expressing those few words that I'd like to say? So I like to use things like that as a jumping off point. So for example, so you bring a lot of intentionality and that's something that my clients will be used to doing, which is like, I ask myself in the mornings, what's my intention of the day, right? So if I was to bring this into the clothing I wear today, I want to be comfortable. Like, as you can tell, I want it to be comfortable. I want it to be warm. I want to be calm today. I need it to be calm so that I could be efficient. Is this what you're saying? So you put this word somewhere, like, let's say in my head right now, like those, that was, that might have been something that I did quickly this morning before I chose my uh, outfit of the morning. Um, And then what goes on? Like, so I have these words, then what happens? Yeah. So I like to break them up by the different areas in your life, because I think that helps. We tend to all encompass things. And really, we, I like to look at a snapshot because we're all a little bit of a, we're a different part of ourselves and utilize different parts of ourselves, depending on what it is that we're doing. So, you know, for yourself, you might have your mom life and you have your entrepreneur life and whatnot. So if you are doing something in one avenue that might not be the same words that you would choose for the other side. And so I split them up in those different categories. It's career or professional life. You have your love, your social life and then your everyday leisure or personal life. So that helps a little bit. And then after that, like you said, intentionality, we're looking at the bigger picture. What is it? What else is important to me? That can be, you mentioned comfort. You know, if you're a young mom, then you're going to want to be able to run around in those clothes or play in those clothes, or maybe you don't want clothes that have to be dry cleaned all the time or different things. We all have different things that are important to us. And so it's looking at those things and and seeing how we can tie that into your wardrobe. Okay, so I am dividing now a page into career, personal, professional, uh, or no, that would be career, uh, love life, and then, you know, leisure life. Yes, leisure personal. I should be saying to myself what identity I want to have in each of these areas, right? Like what kind of mom do I want to show up as? What kind of entrepreneur do I want to show up as? And then based on that, write those words and based on that, begin to kind of have a sense of what expression my clothing is going to have. Yes, exactly. And along with that, I actually do have other exercises where we get into your values, your personality. So you want to tie all of those things in together, but it usually helps to really work backwards and kind of start at the bare minimum, start asking yourself those questions and then kind of add on and and add on to that. Walk me through this. Like, so what do you mean? Like my personality? Let's do this exercise with me. Because what I would love for people to walk away with is very concrete things that they can say, this, this is my body type today. What do I do? Yes. So I, you see the person's photo and you're like, okay, you have this type of body. Like, do I identify as this type of body first or how would that work? So I do it backwards. And I know a lot of people do that, but because I am stressing the fact that I want you to be okay with who you are and to celebrate those things first, actually leave the body type to the end. And that's again, yeah, I want you to really lean into who are you? What is it that you want to show through your clothing? So for example, if you want to show that you have a maybe a really playful, fun person, and you want to express that vibrancy, that is one part of your personality that you might want to tie into your clothing every day. And usually when you have, I like to pick about three We start with a lot of words, but then we narrow down to about three for each category. I'll say, okay, go in your wardrobe and try and put an outfit together and show me what that looks like. You know, are you able to? (laughs) Okay, let's use me as an example, because I, I, one of the things I love about, I I love doing is giving very concrete tools. So anybody listening us can do one of two things, go and have fun and do choose an outfit that expresses themselves and where they can feel confident. Or go sign up for your course, or maybe they want to do both. But I would love for them to have a win after they listen to this. So let's just give some examples. Some people are seeing me. Some people are just listening to us. Uh, So I'm your brand new client. I'm coming into you. And I say, I need help. My body has changed since I become a mom. And quite honestly, some of the clothing I used to wear before motherhood no longer fits my lifestyle. Like, you know, like, whereas I used to have like wedges all the time. Now I would really be picky on where I wear those. I have bought a lot more sneakers and flat shoes because that's what allows me to run after a little baby boy. So that's where I'm coming to see you for that reason. And I want to love my body. I sincerely want to love the way I look now, which has been a hard road because of the changes. Go. 
Yeah. So again, I would invite you to tell me, let's figure out your three words for each category. And once you have those words, you'll have your outfit. I like to just give that as a a self-exercise just so you can see, because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, again, that's kind of just like a baby step. Like, okay, go ahead, try and put out an outfit together with your words and see what pieces you own now that you come up with. And then you come back. And once we go to the next step, we're again, building off of those outfits and looking at, okay, what other ways can we explore outfits and in our expression? And it's not until after we play with more outfits that we go, okay, now we're checking off boxes and kind of seeing what do you have? What are you realizing that you may, may no longer serve you? I'm really big on that as well. You know, decluttering and, and not keeping things just for the sake of keeping them. Um, and once you've decluttered your wardrobe, you can choose those few pieces that are still meaningful for you and still work in your lifestyle. And then you can ask yourself, okay, so do these pieces that I still have left that we think have made the cut, do they work into the next part? And that is the dressing for your body type. Okay, so I want to be an active mom. Mm-hmm. I want to be like active will be definitely be one of my words, but also I I wouldn't use the word like it's not I, I am lacking a better word, but I, I want to be like an active and like relaxed mom, but also look put together, you know, like look yes. good. Like if you see me, like you know, there is a part of me that wants to feel like, yeah, I take care of myself. I am attractive. I want to feel attractive, like an attractive, active, relaxed mom. So those will be my three words. Then what do we do? Yes. So again, identifying what that means to you, because one person's relaxed. And I've learned this so many times. Somebody can say, hey, I have a really fun. I love edgy pieces. And then you go out and as a personal stylist, right, I get everything for them. And then you come back with all these really dark and loud and spikes and things that are traditionally edgy. And somebody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, that's not exactly what I meant. Like edgy, edgy for me is like a little bit of color and maybe a leather jacket. You're like, oh, so diving deeper. And just because I know that you mentioned that if you want people to be able to actively do this, my one workbook that I have is completely free and available to anybody right now. So we'll get to that later, but remind me, please. So um, why don't we add that as a link to the show notes yes. so people can download it? That's okay. Yes. So anybody but, listening, you yes, can you head can, to the show notes and do that. Yes, okay. and you can actually do that as they're listening to this, which would be, would be really fun. Um, but so you want to be active and let's say you want to be, you know, want to be able to play with your kid and whatnot. When you say relax, so do you want to be relaxed in a look? So for me, that means certain fabrics. When I think of relax, I think I don't tend to think of things that are particularly constrictive right? So maybe less particularly tight, if you will, or snug clothing and jeans. Maybe you think of a really cute wide leg jean and to your point, like a slide or a sneaker that conveys to somebody a relaxed vibe versus, you know, heels and a skinny jean and and a jacket. So things like that. So we start to narrow down what that looks like for you. Okay. So my three words, then define what my three words are. Right. Like what, what do I mean by relax? So exactly like I'm wearing like this hoodie that's super soft. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a nice, like I, I like it, but like you can tell it's loose. It's definitely very loose. To me, that's relaxed. And it's just like, it's got colors on its own that are calming, right? So like that, that would be, so define like your three words. Yes. And then go head into my closet and figure out what kind of outfits I already have that kind of match that expression. Yeah. And that's going to, again, help to weed out any things where you're like, you know what, I really like this item, but to your point, maybe it doesn't fit anywhere anymore, or maybe it just doesn't serve me anymore. And you look at that piece and you reflect, you're like, what is it that I liked about this? And when you ask yourself those questions, you can say, huh, you know what? I think it, I like it because it reminds me of, you know, X, Y, Z, and I don't really need that anymore. You know, so it's, Thank you for what you've done and goodbye and pass it on to the next person. Let it live its next life. You know, when you recognize what elements it is that you like, you can take those same elements and use them for the next item in your current state. Okay. And so that's great. I go into my closet, I choose something, but how do I know I'm dressing for my body type? Like, how do I know these colors suit me? Because I might like them, but they might just wash me off. Like I am fully aware that these colors don't bright, like don't brighten me up, right? Like these colors that I'm wearing right now, they kind of go with my skin color. So I kind of go all like one pale tone. Yes. Which is weird for a brown person to say, but I do look pale with this, right? Uh, yeah. But I, so so how, how would I go about knowing, okay, 
like the cut is good for me or no, like a round cut is better for my tops or I should be wearing high waist jeans because they suit my body that like, how does one go about finding that out? I get now the expression. I get like how, like I, and I love how intentional it is because I think if I was to be that intentional with my clothing, first of all, I'll have less clothes in my closet Mm -hmm. because they're so specific about what I want to express and how I want to express myself. And two, I think that I think differently now when I go shopping, like if I was to buy that, this is pretty, but how would that make me feel? And what, how would that fit with my values and what I'm trying to express? Absolutely already love that for a shopper here. I think that that would be, that'll cut my shopping by a lot. But then tell me like the body type, how do I recognize what kind of body I have and what looks good for this body? Yes. So this one I know is a little bit of a um, more sensitive area. So that we do ask that you measure yourself in the program, or if I were with a client, obviously I could measure them myself. And when doing that, it's really because I think that most women will find that they see their body in a way that may or may not be accurate for what it relates to in you know the design and retail world. And that's really important because there are so many tools that are available to us. And it's less about, um, again, about not, it's less about labels, but really it does help if we somewhat define what your particular body type, I go into your frame. So if your height as well, if you're short, tall, and nowadays you can find so many things, but you just need to know where to look. And once you can kind of narrow down those options, I think it takes a lot of the overwhelm out. So there's that. When you're looking at your body type, uh uh-huh. Sorry, so no, I'm, okay. thinking like I'm short, uh, like relatively short, I'm 5'4", or 1 meter 53 centimeters for those with uh, metric uh, measurements. So I know I'm short. I know I have, uh, like, what else would I look like? Then my measurements will tell me something. Like, I have a smaller yes. waist. I definitely have, like, bigger chest and um, bigger hips. Yes, so usually it's broken down into about five or six different types. And what are they? Yeah, so the types would be if you are broadest at the top, if you are broadest in the center in your waist or your midsection, if you're broadest at the hip and your backside, so there's top, middle, and bottom, then you're going to have what would be considered curvy, which would be more or less equal, equally broad in your shoulders, bust, and hips. So that was traditionally like an hourglass shape almost. And then you have the more linear or the straight version which is going to give you less of those curved angles. Right. Right. So those are your basic body types. And I like to identify your secondary, or excuse me, your primary and your secondary. And that's because I think, again, most women benefit from certain tools of each of the different types, because again, everybody is completely different and completely unique. So I don't think anybody's really cookie cutter one thing other or the other. It's very rare. So once you identify your body type, and then again, take into account your frame. So I'm sure I'm barely five feet. So hundred percent, that's automatically going to put me in the petite category for a lot of things. And that's important because as a designer, as a retailer, they cut things for petite women and that will be completely different than something that is, you know, just a mainstream, if you will. Okay. So would I qualify as petite? Yes. So five, five, four and under is typically considered petite. However, and I'll use myself as an example again, I'm barely five feet, but really where I am petite overall, there are some areas of my body where I am midsize. And so again, everybody's different. And so I will take elements once you understand that we want scale and proportion and balance. It's really all that we're looking for in any of these body types is how can we add a little bit here or trick the eye a little bit there in order to see more of ourselves and less of the the outside and just the clothing. And once we do those things, we can pick and choose what tools we like and what works for us. Because overall, the tools are not really as as grand as they probably seem. So let's say that I would self-qualify as, I'm looking at a photo of me standing, I would think that maybe... So broadest on top, broadest on center, broadest on bottom, then curvy or straight. I would say maybe I'm curvy. Okay. Yeah, and my, my, my guess. And then you said there's usually two types. So I think I will be primarily curvy. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I don't see it as, a, I don't think I would be on a straight. 
any of the streets, I think that you can definitely see some changes happening. What will be a second close to that? So for most women, if you're curvy, you can borderline lean on either broadest on top or broadest on bottom. It's pretty rare to have the exact same or almost exact same measurement in both areas. So, right. or some, there can be another element. Like you can be, for example, again, I'll take myself. I am more petite on the top than I am on the bottom. So right. even though I am also a curvy body type, depending on what I wear, I can lean towards okay. broader on the bottom. I so see. then, yeah, you can take that and, and tweak it a little bit. Okay. That's important for me. So I think I am probably broader on the bottom as well than the top. Okay. Like, you know, I could get along. I could get away with, I'm just going to say, an, a size small or extra small on the top, but not so much on the bottom. Right. Like okay. Yeah. So that would tell me something. Okay. Yes. So and those then, would be your two. Okay. So once you're in the higher body type, what do I, like, how does a uh, woman with my body type dresses? Like, what, what suits this body type? So the one thing that you're going to want to take into account is how can you overall balance your hips or the, the bottom area? And you're going to do that through your shoulder primarily. So always looking at the cut of your shoulder and the cut of your sleeves are going to be very important. And so that's why right now we even we have a lot of tops that have a little bit of gathering at the sleeve or that kind of like puff effect. So you can, there's a range the blouse if anybody is watching the blouse I have right now has just very slight gathering and that gives the tiniest little bit of added visual weight is what we call it to my shoulders and that would help to balance out some hips now you can take that and write it as far as you want you want to do the really big fun sleeve go for it and that's also going to help balance so usually a, a jacket or a very structured sleeve is going to be very helpful for that and, and then always because, showing but, your waist. And that's because we identify that my hips might be broader than my... Slightly broader than the top. Yeah, so it gives you more room to balance. Honestly, it's really just an opposite game. So if, okay. if you were feeling that you had maybe broader shoulders and your hips were narrower, then you could serve to add more frill and flounce, whether it's pockets or the cut of a pant or to a skirt and adding a little bit more volume, not bulk at the bottom. What is the difference between volume or uh, and bulk? So actually, I'm really glad you asked that. Um, I think that subconsciously, when we are wanting to lessen somebody's ability to maybe see something and a part of our bodies, we have this tendency to go way opposite and go very oversized. And so we think, well, hey, well, if I go really oversized here, then, you know, nobody's going to see anything and they won't know any different. Well, unfortunately, then we lose any shape whatsoever. Like we, we are not even seeing a person at that point. We're just seeing this shape, this, or I'm sorry, this not shape, right? And so in doing something that is adding just a little bit of volume, I tend to say you want to, to have something that skims. So you don't want something necessarily too clingy or too tight. There's a fine line between something really clingy and too tight and something that is just so much volume that you can't even tell what's happening underneath. <laughs> like we're right and mind you that's okay like there are days where I'm like this thing is so cute and I don't even care like that's absolutely fine but when you're wanting to take those tools and you're wanting to make a certain look work you can take something that maybe has a little excess volume that you purchase like a skirt that has a lot of really fun volume at the bottom and I love the skirt but you know what I might choose to take it to the seamstress and have them take a little bit of the volume out just so I'm not completely drowning and you lose me altogether yeah, my husband refers to those dresses that I do own as the potato bags. It's like, <laughs> I, <don't see> <laughs> I happen to love that look. I'm like, wow, it's just so liberating. And, and, and But I do, once a photo is taken, and I'm sure maybe some people can relate, you think you look at thing on an outfit and a photo is taken, and you're like, that's my head floating. <laughs> look, yeah. What was I wearing? What was I thinking? So do you recommend people to do that with their outfits to take photos so that they can see themselves and, and like... Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, my whole line of work is based on what somebody looks like in a photograph as they step off the plane or on the red carpet or in front of a, you know, for a magazine. Like that is literally my whole job description is how do I make somebody essentially look good in a photo or, you know, whatnot. So it, it for some people, it can be very helpful. It's only, I always say, take what, you know, what serves you and just the rest. Let's talk about the woman who's got low self-confidence, who's really not loving at all her body image. So we're giving her the task to start thinking about as if she liked it, right? Like we're saying, 
choose these words, but I want to be attractive and confident, but I don't believe I am. And so how does she move forward selecting clothing that makes her feel something that she's deep inside not feeling right now? And how can she even do this exercise of without without hating her body image? This whole month, I'm trying to encourage women to respect their body image. You might not like it, but you got to respect it. Just like Absolutely. any other relationship, right? Like, let's not become the abuser because that's essentially, and I put myself in there, what I see women do all the time. We take a photo of ourselves or we take a photo, family photo, and we zoom in and we start like abusing our, our body image. And so I can imagine that person in this moment who is feeling discouraged about their body, who may have feel that they've let go. They don't want to go shopping. They like summer starting here in Canada. And so they might start already thinking like, oh shit, I've got to wear shorts and no sleeves and my arms are going to show and bathing suit season. I run. What, what do you tell this person? Like what work does she need to do so that she can still love that image and dress gracefully for that image that she's having a hard time loving? Yeah, well, I do that a few ways. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that it is like any other relationship with anybody else, because that's the way I see it, too. I'm like, you know, whether it's a relationship, you know, friend or anyone, like we need to try and start to be our own, you know, biggest cheerleaders. And I know that it's really difficult. But if we just took the tiniest little bit of love and compassion and grace that we would extend to our, you know, our bestie or to our sister or our mother, any other person who would put something on and maybe be like, oh, you know, I'm not really feeling, you know, great right now. We would shower them. We would say, what are you talking about? You're such an awesome person. And, you know, you look fantastic and whatnot. We took even the tiniest little part of that and, you know, gave it back to ourselves. I think each and every one of us would flourish in a heartbeat. So, you know, it is a process. It's it's a step-by-step process. You know, I like to thank my body for all of the things that it does for me, you know, thanks for waking up and getting me out of bed this morning or whatever that looks like to you. But I, I do think it involves work outside of just the clothes. But I also think the second that you start to make even the tiniest tweak, and you start to see yourself again, little by little, like you just chipping away at that stone or, or at that potato sack, you know, again, it, we're hiding ourselves. We're hiding, you know, on the outside and the inside when we're feeling that way. And, and it just makes me so sad because I know that as women, we are all inherently worthy and, you know, we deserve to let everybody see all the wonderful parts of ourselves. So just kind of peeling away at the onion and exposing those layers little by little. So each, yeah. each step will kind of give you a little bit more of a boost and a little bit more and, and hopefully, you know, turn things around. I love that. And I think that ultimately when I think about my own journey and I didn't have you, but I did because I remember I definitely struggled after I gave birth. And I think many women do with the hormones also, right? Like hormonally, you're trying to come back into balance. Your body's not, it's not the body you're used to. Hi friends, I'm interrupting you to personally invite you to join my new Reset Your Mindset 12-week coaching program. It is 12 weeks to go from fear to courage and finally to take inspired action. We see the world as we are, not as it is. Let that sink in. Working on having a complete mindset reset can help you see things differently, to see things as they really are and not as your mental drama tells you they are. Raise your hand if time after time you have found your mental drama taking over you, your peacefulness with worry, with limiting beliefs, with unexplained fears that keep you not just from your full potential, but also from being genuinely happy. So I don't know you, but I believe life is too short to not be happy. And that's why I've created a 12-week program that can help you learn all the tools to properly learn how to reset your mindset, to go from all those things, that thoughts that make you live life in fear, to feeling courageous, to having mental clarity, to walking away from feeling blocked to being happy and confident. So imagine you're feeling confident in your ability to do things that used to keep you paralyzed in fear. Imagine 
you trust your inner voice because it is confident instead of full of anxiety. Imagine you're 100% in control over your emotions and thoughts. You have now unlocked your motivation to get things done for real. Your thoughts finally match your dreams and aspirations, not your fears and what ifs. If you are feeling this is a calling for you, if you want to try life coaching for a short period of time with an investment of $1,200 for the three months, you get weekly calls with me. You get weekly mindset videos. We start September 13th and we go all the way to meet December. Sign up and let's finish this year strong. The application link is in the show notes. So head over there, apply, and let's see if you're a good match and get you into this program. I joke about this because I, after I gave birth, I was upset that I couldn't see my six pack anymore. Mm. And then I thought to myself, when did you ever have a six pack? <laughs> I great. never did. I never had a six pack. But that was the level of self-expectation I had of myself. It was unrealistic. It wanted me to be something that I never was. And somehow I feel that this is true for so many women. We want to be like the model on the magazine or on Instagram that we have never been. Like that's not even your body. So even that wish or desire to look like something else is so out of <laughs> whack. Just like my thought of like, where's my six pack? Please come back. And then it hit me, hold on, you've never had one. Like, what are you talking about, Olga? You've never had a six pack. Uh, but I do think that one of the things that was hard was going into a closet where my clothes were not for my body. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you touch on that. I That's one of the things that I did. I was, instead of telling myself permanently, well, keep wearing your maternity pants until you're back to your size four, which, you know, it actually took me almost a year to go to that size and effortlessly, like I didn't do anything that naturally my body just bounced back to that. But I did have to go shopping and I did have to buy a size 10 and a size, you know, like other sizes that were not in my closet. And I had it in my head. I remember how in the back of my head where I was thinking like, I can look good today. I can choose that this body I own right at this moment has clothing that looks good. And I became curious and I started looking for styles on Pinterest and like, okay, you know, what are moms wearing? And like, what kind of outfits do I think would look good for this body I'm wearing? And then I went shopping and, it, and it's true that although I still had some emotional, obvious work to do, the knowing that I had clothes in my closet today that looked good on the body I had today made such a big difference for the getting dressed. For the going to the park, they didn't feel like, oh my God, what am I going to wear? How am I, you know, like it wasn't a, a self battle each time. So that was absolutely helpful. And one of uh, my good also peers, uh, Julie, I always say her name wrong. You know her, Julie. Oh, yeah, it's Julie. What's her last name? Say her last name. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to butcher it. I'm so sorry, I, Julie. I, 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 and she laughs because I always do consistently. So I just call her my friend, Julie. Julie uh, posted a while back on Instagram a story where she decided to shop by ordering three sizes. And so she would get like three jeans ordered, obviously making sure that it's a company where returns are made really easily. So, you know, like you're not going to wasting money and she would not even look at the size she would just try them on sit down like cross her legs all the things you want to do and she would choose whichever felt more comfortable and like zero size shame and so I started doing that and holy crap it makes all the difference right like instead of being so stressed out about oh my god but what size am I I don't know I'm between a size four and a size ten so I'm just gonna order three pants and I'm gonna see yep. what the size is so that was helpful but the one thing that I remember you did for me was telling me what my color was Oh, yes. I love this. Sorry. You told me, I hope you don't mind me telling you, blue is your color. And so, ladies listening to this, I was like, really? Hesitant. But I had a few blue items. Hence, she was telling me, like she had seen me, you had seen me wearing something blue. And then I started paying attention. Guess what? I received compliments when I wear blue. People were like, oh, you look so nice today. They had, no, you know, like, I'm like, must be the blue. So, of course, I went on a mission to buy blue I am. <laughs> I love that. And I have to tell you, every single time I wear blue, I feel pretty because now I notice it is my color. Like it actually twists my black hair. My eyes look popped out. Like it's such a beautiful color for me. I get compliments. And in fact, 
the moments that people tell me, where did you buy that? They want to get it. It's because he looks good on me. They want that same sweater oh, and it's awesome. my color. How does one go identifying their color? Like, I wouldn't have known that, you know? I could have yeah. said, my color, red is very pretty against my black hair. But like, how does one go to, like, not everybody has Kim following them on Instagram to be like, hey. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I want to make sure I just want to touch on the Julie story because one, I absolutely love that story. And particularly that's actually the last step in the dress with confidence program. So after you identify your body type is prepare you for shopping. And, and one of those things, and going back to the measurements and all of that, that knowing your body type is important because the retailers, they don't, their sizing, there is no, not universally, there is no sizing. So it is completely like a shot in the dark. You know, we've all seen the videos to your point, you know, the size 20 and the size, you know, whatnot. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. All that matters. Nobody's going to look at the tag and all of that. So I absolutely love that story. Um, but to the color point, so there is a very tried and true science to color theory. And I do not want to disrespect that whatsoever. And, uh, you know, I do. I am familiar with various elements of that. And I will say probably one of the easiest ways that somebody can go about finding out what types tonally, what they are, um, is gold or silver jewelry. So if gold jewelry looks really great on you, you're going to have a warmer skin tone. And if silver jewelry looks better on you, then you're going to be better with uh, cool colors. So warm or cool colors. So that's a very easy way. Like you can run to your closet right now and put it up and just whichever one pops more. And if okay. for... Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pretend that I'm, I'm not going to pretend I am completely ignorant. What is a warm color and what is a cool color? Okay. So, and oh, I really wish I had my color wheel. That would probably be so much more helpful for those who actually get to see this. Um, but there are potentially more muted, if we want to say tones, I'm going to use blanket terms. I don't want to get too crazy with the color um, thing, but there's a spectrum. And so you have colors that almost think of like a soft and a clear color. There are colors that are very true to what they are. So if you think of like, to your point, like a red, a bright red or a blue, every color you can add white or black to it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to change. But when you think of really striking true colors, if you have something like I have silver jewelry on and it pops against my skin, I can wear cool colors. So you're going to wear colors on that side of the color spectrum. And then if you go into more warm tones, it's, I want to say they're slightly more muted, if you will. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to describe uh, for those who are just listening, but there is a medium too. Not everybody, but there's a neutral. It is possible that gold and silver both look mm -hmm. equally good on you, which is not a problem. But again, wear whichever you like the other one. You can wear the other one. But when I actually called your color out, so something that I like to do is I feel that I pick up energy off of people, right? We all have an exchange of energy. And as you mentioned, we had known each other and we had had some conversations. And I, it's almost like an aura feeling to me. And to me, you exude and you embody what it is that you preach, right? You're talking, you gave me a sense of calm and a very sense of relaxation and, and peace, even just in the first few exchanges that we ever had. And to me, blue, if you look at statistically what colors and what images um, or what that color represents to other people, you would read that blue has a very calming energy and it presents so many things. If you look at the sky, you think of grounding yourself, you look at the ocean, all of these things have those properties. And to me, I like that aspect of color theory personally over the more traditional sense. So I do touch on the traditional sense, but to me, I'm like, if that's what that color gives you and then feeds more of that to you, then you're only going to continue to pour more of that out, right? It's like matching up that essence again, the that's inside so and the outside together. So, so I didn't even know this part. So this is news yeah. that you that, that that you felt that way and that you think embodies what I what I teach and preach. Yeah. Which I love that you have that perception. It's a great compliment to me. Thank you. But what I find fascinating is that my element is water. Ah That's weird. <laughs> That's and okay. I, I I work with symbols a lot in my life. And so in my home, in my relationship with my husband. I decided that my dynamic, my role, my identity is the heart of our home because that it's me to a T, right? Like I feel all feelings. I want to make sure everything feels like loving and strong. Like that's the heart. Mm -hmm. I want to be that in this home. But also I am the water of this home. 
you know, like I'm the calming force. It's strong and powerful and confident, but he's calm. Uh, whereas I see my husband as fire and his element is fire and he's a Leo. And so he's like live yes. and in this home. And so he's like the head or neck of this home. That's his role that, that I, I give him. And because uh, he's logical and he plans and he does all the details that I would never even care. I'm just going to love it all and just be with it. Um, and Chris is fire. And, you know, his favorite color is orange. And he does this uh, like, oh, yeah. just, oh, that's so interesting. He's getting yeah. orange at any given point. He wants everything to be orange from his, you know, watch, um, um, phrase like whatever you call this like the um, the strap like the the yeah the yeah. top of his uh, watch to his shirts like he wants to wear orange and be bright and be the center of attention right like he's the sun so this makes a lot of sense and I would love for people to kind of identify maybe your elements you know your elements look up look it up what were you yeah. what your zodiac sign what does it represent and you might notice that you already perhaps gravitating towards the color that suits your personality who you are yeah yeah and the time after i give birth and even in pregnancy i wore black black mm. time because i wanted to like reduce my existence and obviously i can you tell me somebody who doesn't look good wearing black i i think black is such a you know uniform color yeah black is a very universal color and you know some of my friends or anybody catches this i love black black and white is like for my entire life i've been obsessed but to me because that is the perfect example, right? The yin and the yang, this perfect balance is the contrast. And when you think of design elements and things like that, and classic, for me, I love classic things that are timeless. So it's like, oh, black and white makes sense. But again, I, I invite people to look at colors. You know, you think of purple. So if you think of, you know, even the royal family, how do they incorporate colors? They incorporate colors of the various, you know, countries or the Commonwealth that they go and visit. And you'll see that they wear certain colors as that are represented in the flag or in their history like you can choose a color like purple that has a very royal color and there are millions of different shades of purple you know so if you're on the warmer side you would choose then a warmer shade of purple or a cooler side and they'll represent and express different things so it's really it's a whole world the color here is fascinating color. yeah absolutely oh I, I love this and I think that everybody should find their color and I think I would say like looking back another way of looking at your color is when do you get the most compliments you all have a piece of clothing mm -hmm. that when you wear that notice how people are like attracted to you because they're like oh, beautiful color on you that tone yeah. really you know um i know last last week i was wearing like a peach sweater and my client made a point like i just have to tell you that's a beautiful color on you and i was like oh thank you no action to that right yeah oh definitely um, and I was just going to say, I have another really quick thing that your listeners can do very easily at home that might help them also know. So if you take the, if you think of, let's say from one to 10, right? The left to the right, a spectrum of the fairest skin to the deepest skin. And you find which point you resonate with in that line. Mm -hmm. So let's say I, you know, depending actually also on the time of year. So let's say for the summer, I can be like a three or a four maybe. And I am more on the left side of the spectrum. Well, if you take your hair color and do the same thing, so from white to the deepest shade of black, then where are you on that spectrum? So my hair definitely looks more black on camera, but in person, it's actually really deep brown. So again, let's say I'm more of an eight. So if you are very far away on that spectrum, then chances are you're going to be able to wear more clear colored, like true colored clothing. And if you're closer on that spectrum, so your hair color and the tone of your hair are closer in color or not far on the spectrum, whatever that is, that's a deeper toned skin with very dark hair, that would also be the same. Then you can then lean more into softer or again, those kind of not so crisp, bright, clear, true colors, more muted color. Yeah. So my hair is definitely probably one of the darkest shape of shade of black it almost looks blue sometimes that's oh wow yeah black it is. definitely and so i think that's also why like some lighter colors would look good okay so we've got like what to do with your colors uh i i really do love finding clothes that identify you or that that expresses your identity mm -hmm. going back to this person who's not very confident going shopping like how how can we best support her in choosing this idea of finding what looks good for her body so i went on pinterest and looked for potential models that looked like my size i think that stores are doing that better where they change body types and 
with the clothing so you have a better image of like ah oh, that's what I would look like if I wore that right um how else could women begin to think and find out like what looks good for their body type well I definitely think it involves a little bit of homework and I know that's not the like really fun sexy answer but just like going to the grocery store you know you go to the grocery store if you go without a list and you're hungry you know, you might still come home and be like, oh, I don't have everything that I need or might need, you know, missing some ingredients or whatnot. It's being prepared. It's having a list. And I'm all about putting things in your notes and app in your phone. So knowing your measurements, that also helps with your shopping online. How many times have you gone to see even myself? Like what? Okay. So that's what it looks like on her, but what is my size? What is your size conversion? Like you actually need to know that information. And I will die on that hill because that's the number one resource that I use. So a measuring tape, I actually teach people tricks that they can use. So you don't even have to, and I don't like to say this because I do believe you need to try it on. But if you can't, even now, some places won't allow you to try things on. You can check if it'll fit areas without trying anything on. So really armed with those tools, again, knowing your measurements, having a list and knowing your needs, your wants, and your nice to haves shopping with intentionality. These are all the pieces start to come together and kind of blocking out the noise. I'm a really big fan. Again, leaning more into what you like, what makes you happy. Yes, step out of your comfort zone if you want to, but don't allow yourself to be overly bombarded and consumed with what everybody else is doing, whether that's through social media. I do love Pinterest, but again, I mean, I don't even want to get on a whole nother thing, but the representation on Pinterest, unfortunately, is still very much lacking for me personally. Um, but I mean, I do love it as a tool and I'm really happy that there are a lot more things that we can, you know, look up and find now. But kind of getting getting a better idea of what it is you like, what sticks out to you, why do I like it? And once you have those tools and you're in the store, again, narrowing down, like you just kind of have to put blinders on, you know, go straight for what you're looking for and, and, and go through that, do your homework, know what stores you can check their inventory online. Almost everybody has a presence online. Before you even get to the store, don't waste your time. Look up what are the things that they have now. Oh no, that doesn't appeal to me at all. And just skip it. Like don't even make yourself feel bad or waste your time. Wouldn't you agree though that sometimes, Mm -hmm. I mean, this happened to me, what I loved wearing just does not look good for my body. So what are you doing? Like I have items that I love. I love them. And without a doubt, the people that love me most have told me, it just doesn't suit you. It's time to give it up. And I'm like, I can't believe that it doesn't suit me because how can I love it so much? And obviously our perception is we love the piece because we think it looks good on us, right? Like I recently bought something. I love it. I love it. I love it. I was waiting for it to arrive. I put it on and Chris was like, it's just not for your body type. And I knew something was a bit off, but I love the item so much. I was like, but I want to. So how does a woman know, first of all, that what they like looks good? Or, or you know, because like, you know where I'm going with this. And I've seen people, I'm like, I'm sure you're wearing that because you'd love it, but it doesn't suit your body. Yeah. And, and I think, you know what, there's, there are going to be some times where that, again, if that's ultimately like you love that dress and same thing with me, um, there are certain styles that again, being so short and so curvy, I get to, I can get really overwhelmed with things yeah. that are overly frilly. And I actually do like what I call romantic pieces, you know, and, yeah. and I can get lost in that. So 99% of the time I don't wear them. It's not because I don't necessarily want to, but you know, other aspects of my life, they're not really practical, you know, whatnot. So it's not because they don't potentially suit me that I don't wear them, but do I have a couple of them and kind of say, you know what, F it, like this makes me happy. And if I want to wear this and I want to feel like, yes, it's not the be all end all. And that's where, again, I think you have to take things a little bit with a grain of salt, but being the stylist that I am, I will say the number one thing, please, please, please. When you try something on, especially if you take the tools that I give you, you know, for example, uh, purchasing something for the, you know, broadest part of you. If you're, if I'm purchasing a top and my shoulders or my bust are particularly broad, I need to buy the thing that fits that. I can't need to stop trying to make the thing that fits my waist work for this and get frustrated and be like, why is this not working? No, 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 no. Like make it work for this. And guess what? If you need to go and again, get it tapered in to, you know, show that waistline or whatnot, then do that. To me, the number one, don't always take things just for what you're seeing, like at face value. Everything can be either taken in a little bit here. Again, you know, that big fluffy dress thing that I like that I also knew and thought I should return and 
I was like, no, you know what? I really like something about this makes me feel like happy. Like when I was a little kid and running free and wearing big frilly dresses and I don't care. But I still, I still, I did go ahead and take a little bit of that extra volume out, show that I do have a little bit more waist, like just little tweaks like that. And that part made me feel, I'm like, oh, okay. So you know what? It's not, again, it's not overwhelming me to the point where you no longer see me and the dresses wearing me and not me wearing the dress. So awesome. So, and I agree, like I have this beautiful red dress that I bought, red, red dress that I bought for summer and I, I get lost. I get absolutely lost in it. And I was like, but I can't bring it back. <laughs> I love it. I'm determined to wear this. And my husband was like, why do you pick it somewhere so that they can pick it in a bit? And I was like, well, oh, that's brilliant. I never thought of that. So yeah. definitely. Uh, okay. Your top three recommendations for anybody listening to this, who is having a hard time with her body type, who might become really self-critical. And she just like, I, for, for a while, I hated my arms. I didn't want to wear anything that was like showing my arms because they just looked like whatever it is that I thought they looked like. Not, nothing kind uh, came from, from my body type. And I just, I, I can imagine that this summer I will have a really hard time going through the summer if I couldn't wear tank tops because of my own mind. Like, so what do you tell to that woman? Well, again, you know, the journey is sometimes a long one and, you know, it'll ebb and flow throughout our lives. I would say that just like any other relationship, you can establish for yourself your non-negotiables and your boundaries, you know, and those are going to change. They're, so if right now this is too big and scary for me to be like, yes, love it, own it. Sometimes that's just too far away of a step for somebody to take to feel comfortable. And so you take that baby step. You know what? I'm going to show, I have a really great, I'm going to show a little bit of my neckline and you know what now, you know, I've, I feel like I'm showing a little bit more of myself again, not so much about the skin, more about showing your shape and whatnot, you know, establish what those non-negotiables are. I don't really feel like I'm ready to bear my whole arm, you know, well, guess what? I'm going to take the tools and understand the types of tops that are the tweaks I can make, make this a three quarter or whatnot. Again, I, I don't want to let have anybody lean so far into something where you're just like, no, like I'm too scared. This is too much for me. You know, it's baby steps. It's what is comfortable for you right now, today, the next step, and then go on and so on and so forth for there. And the more steps that you take overall, you'll start to realize what's best for you. You get to have some progress in that area. Yes. Yes. You don't have to be all or nothing at one point or, or all or nothing in one day. You know, today I'm comfortable with this and tomorrow I'm comfortable with that. And that's okay. Something else. Yeah. Now tell me about the high waist pants. I am absolutely in love. I know where they've been all my life because <laughs> like they're below the hip bone to like, look, everything goes in and it's impacted and I love them. Stylist, what are you saying? What body type should be wearing these? Like who shouldn't? I, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I love high-waisted jeans and I probably have longer than most people thought that I should. Um, but again, it, it depends. Um, I think pretty much any body type can wear a high-waisted jean, although there is a difference. There's actually kind of a range. So there is, of course, a mid-rise would be considered like the you know regular and there's a high-waisted and then some of them are extra high-waisted. And I know this is going to sound a little strange. And again, because you know, people are most likely not seeing us. Um, it's a little bit different to difficult to visualize, but I do think there's a line between the high waisted and the super high because sometimes we go so high and for somebody like me, who's really short and curvy, I all of a sudden can just be like chest to pants. Like there's no in between, like I completely <laughs> lost my torso, you know? And, and again, that's totally fine. But sometimes for me personally, I'm like, oh wait, like I, there is something in between there. And I kind of want to make sure that people know that it's not just, you know, legs and, you know, a bust and a head. So I personally, I love high-waisted, but I don't tend to go extra high rise. I like to stick it at high just for me. And I think the only body type that maybe doesn't typically do high-waisted as much um, is maybe the straight body type my sister um I'm sure she'll love me putting her out there she has attested to you know she'll like to wear them either mid or a little bit more low and that creates a little bit more of that curve, curve in the hip. yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh wow it's so fascinating yeah so fascinating yeah I am loving the high waist and I only have the extra high waist for the Lululemon pants mm -hmm. they feel like pregnancy pants <laughs> <laughs> for an everyday workout i love them and yeah absolutely the tops are becoming so popular god knows that's only too much a high waist pant. Ooh, well you're gonna have fun because if you i've been seeing out 
um, and I don't know technically how old you are, but I think we're probably in the same age range, um, the longer style. So I know myself along with many other women have been like, okay, I get it. Crop tops are cute, but like, come on, like we don't all want to have everything as a crop top, right? <laughs> the opposite, the layering effect where you'd wear like the tank top under the tank top, the legs are getting opposite, they're going the other direction way longer now with like the lace trims. So I'm like, ah, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah. So what I think we'll get, I get what we wish for, but in the opposite direction. Yeah. Oh God. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. And I, and I do love the, I, I think that I've heard recently about this capsule closet. Mm -hmm. Capsule wardrobe. Yeah. So it's essentially like a timeless clothing, right? That you can, yeah. that you can match and mix with it, have different outfits with less pieces of clothing. Yes. Um, and so I, I do like your idea of classic thinking of classic things that you know you can wear for a long time so if you're looking at saving money if you're looking at looking good you know how could you find like the color that suits you but also the piece that is not a crop that in two months is not gonna be in fashion anymore you like crop now I have all of these crops <laughs> and, like i don't know if it happens to you but i always tell myself oh i'm gonna like it past is not fashionable no, that's not true. Like, when you buy something that is so in right now and later is not, it's just so 1980. You know, like, I don't right, want to wear that anymore. So I do, I, and I, I am finding myself, with the exception of what I'm wearing right at this moment, buying more classic uh, pieces that I can see myself wearing throughout the years and so do you have anything to add to that or yeah definitely um that's something that's really important to me personally um and that was the case you know even before um so many brands came out that were into you know sustainability and whatnot obviously the better choice for the environment is always to choose something that you're going to love longer and keep longer and wear longer outside of that space for somebody in fashion, I think there's a little bit of that like juxtaposition, like, well, to your point, you know, you want to be maybe trendy or, or stylish. And that's where, again, I always say, you know, your personal style and what you like is always going to beat out. And you're going to look fantastic. Like if you look and feel good in something that is really true to you authentically, then nobody's gonna be like, oh my God, she's so outdated. They're just like, wow, she looks so great all the time. She always looks so well put together. They're not, gosh, so-and-so is so outdated. Like, that's not what they're saying. And again, that, you know, at the end of the day, you're dressing for yourself and not for other people, right? But and to your point, with a capsule, you're really going to be able to utilize those items over and over and over. And it takes so much of the, like, stress and pressure of feeling like you need to be always up to date out. It just does. If you're taking, let's say, 80% of your wardrobe and you're building these blocks in this checklist of these main pieces that you know, you have a few base layers and, and this is actually a checklist I have in the workbook. You have the base layers and you have, you know, your next layering pieces and you have so many jeans and you have a few, of, you know, trousers and whatnot. Putting all these things together, you can just rotate over and over and over. And then, of course, you sprinkle in those, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent of the other fun pieces that kind of update that from potentially season to season or from year to year. I love that. I think that more and more and, and it's like environmentally friendly. You're shopping less. You're using less yeah. Materials that are gone you know what happens with our closets full of clothing and I think you've become I, I think what I'm loving the most about this conversation and I hope that that comes maybe also as a takeaway for listeners is that this idea of being intentional is not just with our mind with our relationships with our clothing representing who we are genuinely like I really do love that concept yeah. like is this clothing of uh, item item clothing clothing item geez. clothing item item of clothing either or <laughs> uh, uh, representative of who i am like does it speak about my personality lately i have because of doing my own coaching of myself with my own body image i am um, intentionally leaving black behind i have i have my pieces that i love and i'll keep them and i am intentionally going for really bright colors because i like to think of myself as a human who bright, brightens up people's uh existence and so i wanted to own that and like be confidently wearing a bright color where you can spot me walking a mile away like who's that person with a bright yellow sweater olga here i'm coming and so, so my clothing and my shopping kind of changed over the last six months when I decided to wear more bright colors because I wanted to be seen. You know? And I thought like there was such a powerful intentionality behind that. And, and it really made me do the work of who am I? Like, what is the message that I want to give to the world by being right. and how does she dress it? And so I think that that is no different than um, 
all the other work that my clients for sure are doing on themselves. So this is so awesome and a great way of complementing who we are. How do we dress confidently? Who is this identity that you want to identify with? And how will you pick items that represent that? I absolutely love it. So how do I get a hold of you? Instagram is... Kim, K-Y-M underscore style, S-T-Y-L-E. And there you can find the links to the free downloadable workbook that I mentioned earlier. You can take it to my website and see the programs that I offer. So that's the best way to reach me or kimfergoso.com, K-Y-M-F-R-E-G-O-S-O. Awesome. All of this information is going to be in the show notes, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely love all of our conversations. And I really encourage all of you watching this video or listening to this conversation to reach out to Kim, to check out her website. Like for me, uh, Kim, you broke my stereotype, the stereotype I had about a fashion stylist. To me, it was like, what's the need? What's the use? Like only rich people, Hollywood people. Of course, you work with Hollywood people. They're the only ones who have a, a use for a fashion stylist when you have been so influential on my own existence and how oh, I uh, own and have respected my body throughout the chain while still really just dressing up for it. So thank you so, so much, uh, Kim. I'm excited that my audience got to hear from you and I look forward to connecting you with them and them with you. This is a great uh, connection overall. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. <laughs>